have you guys seen uh, the stuff happening uh, with Chapel Roan? All I've seen. What have you seen? Mm, I don't know if anything has changed in the last few days. I saw uh, Fantano talk about it and then maybe one or two other people. But like, it's one of those situations where controversy is, unless I've missed something, feels almost too generous to the worst kind of people. Yeah. Where it's like, uh, yeah, I, I got a DUI and I hit someone with my car. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a drama. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of a yeah, miscommunication. That, that's on the other end of the, yeah, they had a spat. <laughs> so that sidewalk, that's like the guy, play, that's where the people are? Sorry, I didn't know, miscommunication, I guess. Yeah, no, but this is on the other end of the spectrum where it feels like people are trying to c cancel Chapel Row and like, as if she like did something horrible. And in reality, <laughs> she's just kind of like critiquing the Hollywood machine a little uh, bit. Ah, my ears. I can't even hear that. Yeah, or at least that's my understanding. Super famous people care so much about me. I need to d d get angry at the ones I don't like and defend the ones I do. So there's been several things happening over the last couple months. Obviously, like this whole year, she's been like really blowing up. Right. And she's gotten super famous very quickly. So there's been like several incidents of her basically like making statements that like rub some people the wrong way, I guess. Right, because she had was a, f a prolific TikTok poster. Yeah, you know, obviously when someone gets super famous, people just get weird. People get yeah. super right? weird. Um, and so she had some experiences with like stalking and harassment. Um, sure, but surely like, you know, expressing that wouldn't engender someone to harass you more or be cruel to you online because right, it is just right. a thing that happens then you're allowed to talk about your life. She talked a little bit about it on um, this the podcast freaks yeah they, like, follow they get real, me yeah they follow and like around. follow like like know where my parents live and like my sister where's my sister works like all this weird shit and i'm just like this is the time when i was like a few years ago mm -hmm. that i said if, if soccer vibes like family was in danger is when i would quit and like we're me there too. same we're yeah. there same and so i'm yeah. just kind of like in this battle of like i've i've like pumped the brakes on honestly anything to like make me more known yeah it's like kind of a forest fire right now just yeah. like being itself an incredibly reasonable thing uh, to extre say. extremely reasonable and also like a, a thing that people don't think about is that like like what does it mean to be an artist what is a what are what are like the valid paths of of artistry because if someone it's like this thing that happens in media a lot where if someone's like Oh yeah, I'm working on a script. Then people are like, "All right, get in line, buddy." Mm -hmm. But then like that script gets picked up and they it becomes like a big movie. Now they're like, "Oh my god!" Wow, it's wow. Really actually, good you weren't wasting your time. That was actually the right thing to do because, and also, it's a meritocracy, and there were no, there was no luck or anything else involved. Like people, like people used to like look at me sideways when I mentioned like doing YouTube until I was successful at doing YouTube. Then people were like, "How did you do it?" Wow, that's a you went away from that. And then in it, no, truly, and that is uh, a common thing I still get. And, but oh, the thing podcast is, podcast like Joe Rogan. That's what you do, like Joe Rogan MMA stuff. Exactly uh, the same. Yes, <laughs> exactly the same. You are in control of how famous you get. It at a certain mm -hmm. degree. I think people always are like they were asking for it or whatever. But what she's saying here is that she's making decisions not to, to kind of not try to become any bigger. Yeah, because she's already experiencing a lot of things that are threatening personal safety and, and the safety of her family. I feel like this stuff, and I don't know specifically who's maybe like the main source of criticism, but I feel like the people that police this kind of statement and this kind of behavior are most often not, say, the people at stalker level, like the ones physically taking action. Instead, it's people that like their work yeah and then they consider the artists they like their advocates and as soon as you're letting me down your senator right it's like telling someone if i it's just like, like you're my constituents yeah if, if any opinion or thing you say that bothers me not that's bad but just i don't know makes me feel not great for, because i'm a crazy person then you have actually wronged me but people have to reconcile that as some kind of like moral statement. It can't just be that I don't like something, you've done something. Let's just like create a fictional universe where um, Chappelle Rohan, there's like a, a new alternative universe where their goal exclusively from the beginning was maximum fame. Mm -hmm. Let's just pretend that's what's going on, right? That would not change anything about what they're now saying. No. If you like, I don't know, if you were like, I really want to get into Hollywood, and then you find out it's like scummy, and there's a lot of people you don't work, like working with, and you hate being on set, it's not like, well, you asked for it. 
Like, because I didn't know. Yeah, you didn't expect it to be this. You just don't know all of the. And also how it's going to affect you. Like, for example, I have a lot of very nice interactions with fans, but it's because I'm a much smaller, I'm exposed to a much smaller group. Mm -hmm. And that smaller group is more engaged and they know in general how I feel about these interactions and, and don't want to kind of give me a bad experience. I think there's so much you can project onto music or mm -hmm. a production where like there's the veil between the artist and the things that they're putting out. And you can say, actually, wow, I, that song was about me. Well, it's like, I, they're, they're like, I love you, right? It's like yeah. this, you know, screaming fans trying to like touch you thing, yeah. you know, but- Which is not, I should say, not a thing that we're wrestling with. We're talking about more in the abstract of like, yeah, that yeah I'm just talking yeah, about yeah. like, well, so like, yeah, you're Justin Bieber's of the world. Like Justin Bieber went through so much bullshit. And then also even with, um. I'm trying to remember if this was like a David Dobrik or a Jake Paul thing, but there were like kids going up to their houses and their parents would like take them to their house yeah. and then they would feel like they were entitled to meet them and yeah, not see like, what was wrong with I feel that. Like I very specifically saw it. It was like a Dobrik. It was something like something that. Like and that. it's like, even if I disagree with like things that those people have done, it doesn't mean that they're not entitled to their own privacy. And if their mission was become as successful and famous as possible, you don't have... So what? So the stalkers are good? Is yeah, that your yeah. argument? That what it's okay, I guess I just like it then. Why am I not allowed to express something that bothers yeah. me? Because I wanted something else. And these things can be traumatic. I know Miranda Cosgrove has had like a few uh interviews where she's talked about her experience with stalkers and really mm. like insane fan interact interactions and is like laughy about it, but like it's clearly like laughing in the face of how fucked up it yeah. is, you know? And I, I'll admit, like, especially when I was younger and maybe not as media literate or trying to be more self-aware about it, I would have the natural compulsion to be like, yeah, well, Justin Bieber is for girls. I'm glad he's having a hard time. Or like, he deserves to be like made fun of or whatever. And that just came purely from a place of, he does not represent me. Mm -hmm. It seems like everybody on either end of the spectrum of they represent me, they are me, and if they fail, I hate them. Right. Just as I would hate myself if I failed, all the way through, well, they don't represent me. I'm glad that they're being harassed by the people that hate them. Right. Why? Yeah, Why? It's, it's very strange. And I just want to acknowledge like the privileges that we have because it's like we, you know, can live comfortable lives and also have people who know who we are in public but not experience it to this degree. And if it ever became, you know, to a crazier degree, maybe I would be saying some of the same things, and, you know? Cause it's like, the thing is, the point is that she is not in control of other people and to victim yes. blame and treat her as if it's her responsibility. When you, when you are suddenly reaching such a wide audience, this also happens to people who aren't even artists, you know, it's like, um, when people like uh back in the early days of twitter when people would like take a photo on a plane and be like these people are flirting yeah and then it would become like a viral like thread by the time that the plane landed and now people are aware that people have been watching them and are engaged in their lives and all they did was exist and they're tagging them they have 16 followers I'm like why right why, why it's you do that? like that type of stuff same with uh well actually right now i do feel like there is a, um, a get out of jail free card that a lot of people seem to hold on to where, you know, like like we say, when you can find even the flimsiest moral justification, right. it lets you be the worst kind of person online. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time right now, that is targeting people that have something to kind of broadly critique. Like, well, Jabal Rowan's rich. So yeah. actually eat the rich. And because of that, <laughs> yeah. I can do. And it's like these key words aren't good enough for this. It's That's yeah. not like the get out of jail free card. And, and I, neither is yeah. like, well, they actually tweeted the N word in 2009. <laughs> and I'm like, so I set their house on fire. And this is, I, I, I definitely have like a different opinion when it comes to uh, publicly elected officials, yeah, especially course, yeah. when it happens and when it, when it comes to like, uh, when like very, very, important issues of like, like if, for example, you're protesting a genocide. And that is you protesting to someone that is literally your representative. Right, and and the those people have like additional security and resources to deal with these things. Or like if you're bothering those people at, uh, you know, dinner or whatever, mm -hmm. and you're, a you're talking about 
you're talking to them about maybe uh, their support for a genocide. This happens a lot in the U.S. government yep. uh, because of, you know, uh, the U.S. government support of Israel. And in those situations, they did choose to be there. That is the tax they, of that. They, they because uh, because that is, you know, outsized power and with great power comes responsibility. And I obviously you should not harm those people. Sure. You know, but it's like if you're telling Nancy Pelosi that you don't like her record on something while she's at dinner, I'd say whatever. You Fire know what away, I mean? Yeah. But it's like if you're just like if you're just a person who makes music, you're you don't resign your humanhood in, in your personhood simply by being popular because even if you put yourself out there uh for public consumption, if you put your content out there for public consumption, it doesn't mean that you're sacrificing your personhood and I think that a lot of people get hung up on that because they can't relate to someone who is in this position, mm -hmm. which feels like they have everything. So it's like, what does it matter? It is, uh, it's pure projection. And it is, uh, uh, people don't like hearing this a lot, it is often jealousy, mm -hmm. not just, or I guess more accurately, envy. Like it's a, it's a more sinister kind of- All the of girls jealousy. like Justin Bieber, and I don't even care about their the girls, well, actually. He's just a bad guy. They, he sucks, <laughs> and uh, they're stupid, actually, and I'm not jealous. Turn that up. T play that again. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of catchy, actually. Hang on. Is it too late now to say sorry? <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Because of her rapid like rise in fame and stuff, she's also been dealing with um like the usual like just people approaching her on the street and right. asking for photos and like yelling at her from across the street and like just wanting her attention when she's in public places. And I mean, even without saying exact, you know, we can probably I think everyone would probably surmise that uh, any kind of non-mask presenting amplifies all of this times 10. Right. It's like, I'm not getting catcalled as a private citizen, you know? But yeah. if you're like a femme presenting person, that's like just going to happen because it. we ran the numbers and unfortunately it happens all the time. Yes. Being a, a public figure, especially like an artist or an actor or anything like that is going to really like amplify all of those uh just kind of like random people yeah. trying to interact with you. And she's like been kind of like standing up against that being like, I don't really want to talk to you in public when I'm just trying to go about my day. Yeah. And, and so she made a video basically saying that like, um, I don't care that like other people are fine with that. I don't care that it's like normalized. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, th th that's the thing is that people, people will always go like, oh, well, this celebrity likes it, but it's like, that doesn't matter. This celebrity is always so nice. It's like, look, like Ronaldo got, uh, or, uh, or Messi got passed the jersey into his car at a stoplight and he signed it and passed the jersey back. Okay. It's okay. like, that's cool. Neat. But it doesn't mean that, and, and he's, and he's cool for that. And he's a real one for that. But it doesn't mean that you, you now demand, uh, the degree of interaction that you want from every celebrity you meet because you wouldn't demand that from every person you meet. While I probably will never experience the degree of what she's talking about in this, or at least what I understand her to be talking about in this, uh, when I go to something like VidCon, mm -hmm. it is a concentration of people who know who I am. Or if I do a meet and greet, then it's a concentration of people who came there specifically to see me. That can get overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's like, it is, 100% overwhelming to just have all these people like vying for your attention and want something from you. And I am, and these are, you know, situations that I am prepared for and then walking into uh, we, we don't necessarily uh, on purpose. say their name, but we, we had a friend who a couple of VidCons ago got gridlocked in a hotel lobby mm. because of the equus love they were receiving. Mm -hmm. But it, I, I almost feel like uh, it, it's not a simplification, but like if you're ever on the position where you're arguing that someone's consent is invalid, yeah, kind exactly. of probably you're wrong. <laughs> I don't care that abuse and harassment, stalking, whatever, is a normal thing to do to people who are um, famous or a little famous, whatever. I don't care that it's normal. I don't give a fuck if you think it's selfish of me to say no for a photo or for your time or to for a hug that's not normal that's yeah. weird it's weird how people think that you know a person just because you see them online or you listen to the art they make that's fucking weird i'm allowed to
say no to creepy behavior. Yeah. That's the thing is like, do the people that take issue with this kind of very obviously valid statement, is their argument that the behavior isn't creepy or that creepy behavior is valid? Because both are crazy yeah. things to say. It obviously is creepy and you would feel creeped out if someone came up and told you they were gonna have a hug. And you would also, and you would never say that's not creepy, you would mm -hmm. have a fucking mind. Or you're saying that being creepy is fine. In which case, it's not creepy then? What well, isn't that, something's creepy if you don't want on it. That's like the thing. Have you ever told someone no for a photo? Yes, uh, at VidCon. Because it yeah. was an in motion. Yes. It was going into the curtain. Those bit are the times thing. I've had to do it too, where I'm like, people hey, moving we're like doing stuff. Yeah. And you have to like get to where we're, or like a panel ends, like uh, like if I'm at VidCon and like a, a finishing up a panel and then everybody like comes up to the stage and like wants to like meet you or like take a picture and you just cannot possibly give everyone what they want and you're supposed to be leaving the room. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. And so it like feel the live show was a little like the oh, last yeah, live show yeah. where like I do want to go and chat with people, but we are going to. It's already like got, all of mm -hmm. our friends that we are going to dinner with are going to dinner. Yeah, and I don't want to make them wait purely because I don't know. You call it selfish or whatever you want. My priority is the people that I know. Then that yeah, I, I don't want them to have a late dinner because I was doing something unrelated. And it's also like, it just depends on the day. Like when I was going to San Francisco for the wedding, mm -hmm. I missed my first flight and then I got a later flight. And so I was having a rough morning and I was really in a bad headspace about until I got my rental and then I like drove to my friend's place. And right when I got like to Valencia Street in San Francisco, someone like came up to me and was like, hey, like, uh, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. Like, can we take a picture? And I was like, sure. But I kept thinking about that because I was like, if they had found me 45 minutes ago, <laughs> yeah. I would have been like, I can't. I don't know. I'm so sorry, I can't. <laughs> not I'm because so, of you. I Oh, it's not because of you. Ah, I'm doing so bad. Unless you're a pilot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It felt like a near miss of giving somebody a horrible experience yeah. where it's like, this person actually sucks. I hate them. I, um, but it was fun. But I mean, we can both say, I, I say very, very sincerely, always feel free to come up to because it is it really the best feeling in the world. Like it is it's very oh, yeah. validating. When we say this, this is uh, because the vast, 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 vast majority of any kind of interaction we'd have with a consumer of our work is at worst a little awkward. Yeah. And that's and I, rarely. Yeah. Good. Here's my, you know, uh, Chapel Rowan take, esque take. I had somebody send me a DM. Uh, there was, I, I was at a car, zone. I was at a card shop. And I was playing in like a draft, like a magic draft. I like kept seeing someone like glancing at me. And so I just like thought nothing of it. And then I later got a DM where they were like, hi, Mr. Johnson, sorry for staring, but I'm just uh, a big fan. Um, mm -hmm. I hope you had a good time. And I'm like, okay, you're so close. Just don't stare. I would prefer if you just came up to me and said, hey, big mm -hmm. fan, and then move on about it because it's a lot more violating to like feel like someone's staring at you for an extended period of time yeah. than, than to just have someone say, oh, hey, love your stuff. All right, it, bye. It is a, it's almost like a, a thin line between like uh, going up to someone and ask, not that there's any romantic context to that, just the thing that jumps to mind is like someone comes up to you and asks you out at a bar or a coffee place or something, and maybe you're not equipped for it, but there's at least like some pretense, Yeah, some which protocol. is happening to me all the time, of yeah, course. Yeah, usually so. the, like, freaking princess coming up. Yeah, like, it's yeah. like, and I'm busy, you uh, love the I'm podcast, so, I'm sure. Yeah. But like, uh, you, please no fans. If I'm going up and I'm asking somebody out at a bar, which I, you know, I do with Katie's in Michigan or something, <laughs> there is, oh, she's sleepy. I'm sleepy. <laughs> Good, I'm getting late. <laughs> How about that? The red dot appears <laughs> uh, But there's, if that's something, like, if that's something you're doing right, it is, takes a lot of acceleration. It is a weird thing to get over. Some people are more comfortable with it than others. Some people are really a little too comfortable doing it, but it takes a little momentum. And that setup is as you come along, you're like, okay, I'm gonna follow what I believe is the healthiest protocol, mm -hmm. which I think in most cases is very sincerely like saying hi. And then when natural kind of pretty quickly, just kind of being like, by the way, I just thought, you know, yeah. hey, actually me and my wife sit across the bar. Right. And we, I've hired a woman. <laughs> I've been thinking of getting rid of her and swapping her out. <laughs> yeah, my wife's just peering at me and I'm going like... Yeah, I was thinking about maybe you could 
assume the role. Yeah. Taking my ring off and going. Yeah, hey, I'll, you catch. It's like you're throwing a <laughs> cheese ball in her mouth. I feel weird using this word, but I do. I do think it's kind of brave to to set a boundary yeah. on like such a large stage because it is so valid to set boundaries in your life. I just know that with such a large stage, there's going to be people twisting and turning your intent and yeah. turning it into something nefarious when all it is is setting a boundary. Um, and then I think this is most recently, uh, she decided to cancel a couple of her tour dates. Basically, oh, you can't! This is gonna ruin the tour! My tour! <laughs> of course, people were totally normal about that. Um, <laughs> there's a little video basically describing the situation. Chapel Roan canceled her two shows this weekend because she says things have gotten overwhelming. She was supposed to perform at the All Things Go Festival in New York and in Washington, D.C. today. I definitely saw people tweeting about this and being like, no! Mm. And it's like, I totally, they're, like, there's nothing wrong with tweeting your disappointment, but it it serves as a lightning rod, especially Twitter has just gotten so bad. I know it's always mm. been bad, <laughs> but it's just become such a horrible, horrible place. The okay to good has been culled completely. Yeah, now it's, it is and just so, bad. yeah, it's just like, Literally all the replies <laughs> were, were basically shades of, you know, she's bad. And then somebody was probably like, it's probably because she got the jab. That you know, must like, be it, it yeah. Like it's weird. all that 5G, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it's the 5G waves or whatever. Anyway, sign up for my new coin. She, she betrayed us. It's like, well, yeah, at the cost of probably potentially millions of dollars yeah. and the thing she loves usually to do I'm, at a huge stage. And it's like, she screwed me over personally yeah i bought this ticket for more than 10 like it was like 20 bucks yeah well i now these Festival. tickets for festivals are pretty expensive Don't go to festivals. But, it's crazy to me but go yeah. home her statement also says that she's going to prioritize her health and then wants to be present when she performs to give the best shows possible this is how i feel um when i uh cancel a meeting yeah. <laughs> you know um, what i mean here are a couple critiques of 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 that decision of hers. I literally love you, but girlfriend, that was not cool. And I know that you love being able to speak your mind, therefore I should be allowed to speak mine. Okay, no. I, does this person have a platform <laughs> before, I, before I go in on them? Not really, not okay. Really. So, so what I'll say is it's already missing the point, right? Like it's not that she loves to speak her mind. <laughs> I mean, sure, maybe that's separate, but like that's not, Dude. you know, related to this issue. My English conditioning and I don't think it's completely wrong, but when people ask me like, what's the biggest culture shock or things you struggle with American culture wise? It is when people say, I should be allowed to speak my truth. I don't fucking care. Oh, or I when don't someone, care about your truth. someone says, uh, I'm brutally honest or I tell it like it is. And really it's just like rude. I'm ordering an Uber. Yeah. Like, goodbye. You can tell it like it is without being rude. Right. I agree. Yeah. Okay. I, well, we I still don't like you. And also, <laughs> also I think this person already got pretty ratioed so we can uh no one uh, as uh, this is always the thing but like no one go re talk to this yeah. person please don't go harass someone because of our critique of them being bad to someone yeah or i should be allowed to speak mine wasn't cool people spent real money on those tickets uh they were expecting to see you if i was in their shoes and i heard that you canceled simply because the pressure was too high girl you shouldn't be performing in those shows then you're not ready okay that's oh but that's, lord wait but that's oh, what oh lord that's what chapel rowan said yeah <laughs> He says, I'm not ready uh, to do this. Actually. Yeah, that's, it's so passive aggressive. I think that much is clear. They weren't even a fan. They weren't even going to the show. That's what's even crazier to me. <laughs> I know if I was crazy, I would feel this way. <laughs> um, so Everything the thing jokes, about so. this is uh, I, what upsets me is this is a classic people treating mental health struggles different than mm -hmm. like physical health struggles. And mental health, it's like, like, uh, for example, like Childish Gambino, uh, like had an injury and, uh, canceled his, I think he canceled his whole tour and then he's like, or they're rescheduling a bunch of shows for like way, way out. And he's, he's, this happened to him twice. Like he broke his leg a while back and then like had the, you know, schedule stuff. He broke his legs to me. And it's like, yeah. And it's like, well, <laughs> you could imagine a world where it's like, mm. Breaking your leg really before a performance, like maybe you're just not cut out for this. Maybe you don't leave the house before. Like you do if a you show. look at the caption of that uh, that other uh, TikTok that we just looked at, I don't know if it's still open. I respect mental health struggles, clearly not, and it's 
and it's clear you need six months away from performing. Okay. But, thanks, what, Doc. Uh, yeah, thanks, Doc. <laughs> All right. You got uh, a prescription We while love you and take care of yourself, but then the backhanded part comes and come back to the stage when you're ready to do the job. Would that be That's good for so you? backhanded. You want to do it when And you're it's ready? like, oh, sorry, your bones don't work. <laughs> uh, come back to work. Uh, when you're ready to do the job, Mr. Gambino. Maybe when the cast is off, you come do and the it's show. Like, it's like, you just wouldn't say that if it was a physical injury. And it's like, why are we saying that it's like less valid when like someone, like you don't know someone's mental health struggle. They might be on the fucking edge. Dude. They, you know? And she would be presenting exceptionally well, which is often how people that are struggling the most will and it's present. Just like, not everything is pushed through it, okay? I get that, you know, it, you know, you you grow and you learn by challenging yourself and pushing against and doing things that are difficult. But there has to be space for when too much is too much, and it's not always a just like, you need to suck it up thing. The you know what I mean? The difference between an opinion and a principle is action, and th the it's very trendy to say you respect mental health. While well, clearly not doing it. Holding a principle means doing it. Yeah, it can't just be, oh yeah, actually, I'm not racist. But these niggas need to fucking get <laughs> yeah. out of schools, okay? This feels a little bit like an age thing, or at least that I feel differently than I probably would have like five years ago. But I do feel different now about my uh, uh, wanting things and having to morally justify those. Mm -hmm. Like I also respect and appreciate the context of people's mental health, <laughs> but I can be annoyed. I won't right. say anything. Yeah, you can like, be annoyed. But You're be allowed respectful. to be annoyed. Just don't act like you being annoyed is virtuous. Or that your annoyance like supersedes yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, they got uh, diagnosed with like a terminal. Is that when it's allowed? Terminal I, is it's when like, it's allowed. Uh, me, me saying um. I respect saving money, I really do, while I'm buying more magic cards, putting them <laughs> in my cart. But then also saying, criticizing someone for their, like, someone who makes less money, criticizing them for, like, well, why don't you just work harder? What are you doing? Now, now, like, the, he, now, the thing is, people do spend real money. They spend money on flights, they spend money on hotels, they make trips to go to these shows. And artist canceling impacts those people. That's, yeah, it sucks. It sucks. And they're excited. But. It's not like she's going, ha 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 ha. I'm, I can just cancel at a whim mm -hmm. and I'll get away with it too because I'm famous <laughs> and that's what I get to do. I'm good. And no one can stop me. And then they're like, oh, we, the virtuous public, have to stop you from taking too many mental health days. Yeah. Like it just doesn't work that way. Chapel Rowan is not where your criticism should land. It's the source of the mental health struggles they're having, which you probably agree with. You yeah. should probably if think stalking is If I cancel, I know it sucks. That's you why know, I posted about it. Yeah, that's why I, <laughs> I didn't. It sucks because my PR people say, oh, you should probably post something. They'll love that. They'll love that. They people love will that. be really normal. Um, okay. It would literally probably be easier for them if they canceled and said nothing. Because yeah. then you can, well, you know, that's not naming names, but there's certain uh, public creators in the YouTube sphere who oh. have evaded criticism by literally just not saying anything yeah. in response. Yeah. Hmm. being like, hmm, actually I didn't. <laughs> well, hmm, I think. Would a guy that did that not say anything? I have no idea what you're talking about, but I have a DJ set to go to, so. <laughs> Job. <laughs> if we can be connectors to like, at least somewhat, you know, empathy to Chapel Rowan's situation by virtue of like having a small, tiny little modicum of like experience with people who don't know you like asking things of you. Sure. Uh, maybe we could like share that, like our take on that. With with uh, also an understanding that we could, we can't relate to no. the full thing that they're doing. Because also, I mean, we could become multi, multi, multi millionaire recording artists for some reason. And we're you still- Promise? Fine, hang on. Yeah, wait, hold Let on. Let me go I, get this. I gotta so. schedule it. <laughs> Let me call the DJ. Timberlink, what's up? <laughs>